Non-Mendelian genetics is about genetic principles that were discovered after Mendel's original contributions. One of the most important of these involves linked genes. What are linked genes? Describe their inheritance pattern and explain which Mendelian rule linked genes don't follow. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. Link genes are genes that are on the same chromosome. So fruit flies, as opposed to peas, were the widely used experimental organism to discover the principles of non-Mendelian genetics. And here you can see one chromosome from a fruit fly, and there's a whole variety of genes, sequences of DNA that code for specific traits that are located on the same chromosome. One has to do with this kind of bristled appendages on the head. One controls body color, one controls one type of eye color, one controls wing length. These genes are mostly inherited together, which is different from the independent assortment that we saw with Mendelian genetics. Because they're on the same chromosome, these genes don't independently assort. So like, for example, above, genes T and A in this cell over here, they're linked. In this cell over here, they're not linked. These would independently assort, and these wouldn't. So what happens in crosses involving linked genes? Note, first of all, that we have a different symbol system over here. You can see that right over here. We have B plus, B plus, VG plus, VG plus. In this system, in non-Mendelian genetics, a plus sign indicates the wild type or the dominant allele. If you have a symbol that can be more than one letter, Without a plus sign, that indicates the recessive. In this P cross, what we're doing is we're crossing normal body, normal winged fly, B plus, B plus, VG plus, VG plus, with a black bodied vestigial winged fly. Those are both recessive traits. And note that all the F1 offspring are dihybrid. They're B plus, B, VG plus, VG and they have both dominant phenotypes. This is what you'd expect in a Mendelian trait for the F1s. We have a gray body and normal winged fly, which has all of the dominant characteristics. Now over here, what we're doing is we're representing this chromosomally. B plus VG plus and B VG. Notice that B plus and VG plus, they're on the same chromosome and B VG are on the same chromosome too these genes are linked. What if they were perfectly linked and they never separated? What would you expect to happen? The method here is a little bit different than the method in a Mendelian cross. We're not doing a dihybrid cross, we're doing what's called a test cross. And a test cross, a dihybrid, so B plus B, VG plus VG, is being crossed with a double recessive. And the way that it's done is the double recessive is the male, the female is the double hybrid, the double recessive. I've represented this over here. Here's a representation of the female. On one of her chromosomes, she'll have B plus and VG plus. On the other chromosome, she'll have B and VG. The male is a double mutant, and he has B and VG on both of his chromosomes. When the female produces gametes, then half of her gametes will have a B plus and VG plus, and half of her gametes will have B and VG. Now that's assuming perfect linkage. In the male, all of the sperm have to have B and VG. Here's a Punnett square. These are the eggs that's going here. The other eggs are going here, the other half of the eggs, and all of the sperm are going over here. You put them together, and what you'd expect is that half of the offspring would be B plus B, VG plus VG. The other half of the offspring would be B, B, VG, VG. This organism, these offspring would have normal body and normal wings. That's 50% of the offspring. And the other 50% of the offspring would have black body and vestigial wings. But that is not what happens. And what I'm doing here is I'm letting you know what you would expect if there were perfect linkage. Are you asking yourself, how am I going to get a four or a five on the AP bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard test, but we have a plan for your success. 
Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. What actually happens in a cross involving linkage? Note that the numbers won't always be the same, but the general concepts apply. What we see is that the majority of the offspring have parental phenotypes. What does that mean? Well, the mom's phenotype was gray body with normal wings, and many of these flies have that phenotype gray body, normal wings. The father's phenotype is black body with vestigial wings. Many of the offspring have that phenotype, but a significant number of offspring have recombinant phenotypes. What are recombinant phenotypes? They take one of the phenotypes of the mom and they combine it with one of the phenotypes of the dad. That's what's happening over here in these flies that have a gray body like the mother and vestigial wings like the father or you can have a black body like the father with normal wings like the mother. Those are recombinant phenotypes. Why do we have most of the offspring having parental phenotypes, but a significant minority having recombinant phenotypes? It's because linkage is not perfect. Genes that are linked don't always stay together. Why not? Because during meiosis, there's recombination and crossing over. So linked genes, because of that process, can separate. We'll see the details of this in the next slide. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.